Okay, thank you for connecting to the class today as we get started with our uh, spring semester, spring 2022. Thank you for uh, joining this class on the end times. And uh, good to see all of you back. Um, let's just take a moment to pray and then we will um, get into the course, uh, get started. So could I request somebody to please pray? Could any one of us just uh, lead in prayer and then we will start? All right. All right. Can I pray? All right, Charles, go ahead. Let's pray. Father God, we are really thankful that you love us. Mm. You saw us through many things. Now we are set for this great study. You tell us in Isaiah 45, 11, that ask of me of the thing concerning the future. Mm. So we are here that we can learn about the future. For we know that for you, you are already in the future, you have been there. And now as we try to learn these things, explain them to us and help us have the feeling and the touch so that when we are done with our study, we'll be able to understand these things. Because again, you told Abraham that Abraham is my friend. Can I hide him? What I am going to do? Therefore, we believe that you are not going to hide anything from us. Now that we are here, we are ready, we are expectant. Teach us, oh Lord, we are ready to learn so that we will not die because of lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. But instead, we will be able to stand to give the reason for the hope we have in you. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Thank you, Charles. Once again, uh, good morning to everyone. Welcome. I, I realize we're in different parts of the world. So maybe evening somewhere or uh, very early in the morning somewhere. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, just going to introduce the course. I put the um, three PDFs. Uh, that we're going to get started with. And then as we go along, I will uh, keep sharing uh, the PDF for the upcoming lectures on this course on the end times. So just to, uh, let's get started with uh, an oh, introduction or an overview of what we're going to cover in this course. Um, on, on the end times. So we, as the title would suggest, are going to be looking at Bible prophecy, what the Bible foretells concerning the end times, at the times that we are in and the time to come. And um, we are going to look at some historical information because uh, a lot of the things that the Bible speaks about, even concerning the end times, deals with the nation of Israel. And so we will look back, uh, get some uh, uh, basic information, uh, historical information, and then we will look into the future. Um, our goal, uh, or let me say the focus in this study or in this course on the end times is to help us um, kind of put together a biblical timeline or a sequence of end time events, uh, trying to understand, uh, you know, what is the most likely sequence of the events that are going to take place starting from where we are on into eternity future. Uh, as given to us uh, in, in scripture. So uh, it is more of, you know, uh, an overview, a high level uh, of, uh, or a panoramic view of end time events. 
Now we will get into some of all the some of the details that the Bible uh, gives to us. Now, so that's the focus of this course. And then in our third year, we get into the books of Daniel and Revelation verse by verse. So we won't be doing a verse by verse study of Daniel and Revelation in this course. In this course, it's going to be an overview of Bible prophecy and the signs of the times and those kinds of things. Uh, but in our third year course, uh, we will go through the book of Daniel verse by verse and also Revelation verse by verse. So it'll be a more deeper study again of Bible prophecy and end times. And along with Daniel and Revelation in our third year, uh, we will look at Bible prophecy from other books like Isaiah, uh, a little from Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Zechariah, Joel, in the other uh, uh, scriptures that point to end time events. So we will reference that as well. But in this course, we're going to be referencing those passages. We will you know, we will say, okay, Daniel said this and Revelation says this. And we kind of do an overview of the chapters in Revelation. Uh, but it's not going to be a verse by verse study that we will keep for uh, the third year course on Daniel and Revelation. So I will, um, you know, the, the course materials, I will put out these PDF notes for you. Um, what I am thinking of doing is also sharing some textbooks, meaning uh, uh, some some good, you know, uh, the fact is there are just, just so many different views and so many different people have written so many different books on the end times. I'm talking about Christian uh, uh, um, uh, teachers and professors and so on. Uh, but I probably will share a, a few with you just to, things that we that that we will be following or you know the, the the perspective that we will be taking and I will explain that a little later today uh, so uh, I will give you the notes the notes should be good enough for you to really study and get a good grip on end time Bible prophecy uh, but I will also make some of these other books available to you if you're interested in reading just that you know many of these books are like 300 400 pages uh, which you know it's not easy to read. It's uh, it takes a lot of time. Um, as usual, you know we'll have three assessments. Uh, we will put them out uh, towards the end of this course or somewhere to, to the latter part of this course, just to assess the material uh, that we are covering. Now, uh, one of the people, like uh, like I said, there are many many people who have uh, written books. Uh, one of the people I would recommend if you want to go online and study is Dr. Jack Van Impe. Uh, now, uh, he went home to be with the Lord uh, 2020, I think it was. So, um, uh, uh, but he, in his ministry, spent, uh, I don't know, maybe 60 years or so just teaching Bible prophecy. So, uh, he is, uh, you know, uh, many people called him the walking Bible. Uh, he could quote the scriptures and and, um, um, and 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 his focus was on end time Bible prophecy. And he spent many decades just ministering, teaching on that. Uh, so he's a very respected authority uh, in the subject. And so uh, I would recommend that. And I will give you a few more uh, professors from Bible college. And Jack Van Impe was more of an evangelist, teacher, uh, so on. Uh, but then there are others uh, who are more from an academic uh, perspective. Um, uh, there's uh, this uh, J. Dwight Pentecost who uh, wrote um, uh, like a classic book on eschatology, which many students would study, and I'll make that available to you. Uh, so I would, you know, just share that with you as well. But if you really want to go and, you know, watch videos and uh, read material and read books, I would point you to uh, Dr. Jack Van Impe. Uh, there are others like uh, Tim LaHaye, uh, who's also written a lot of books on this subject. Uh, and I will explain why I mentioned these and not others, um, right? So that's just a quick introduction here. Um, <clears throat> So let's get into our uh, our course uh, material. Uh, just before we do that, 
uh, are there any questions on what we will be talking about, what we will not be talking about? Any questions? Um, maybe they'll come up a little later. Okay. All right, Charles, you've got a Jack Van Impe Prophecy Bible. That's very good. <laughs> nice. Okay. All right. Uh, maybe questions will come up later. So let's get into the um, uh, introduction uh, to kind of share how we are going to be approaching this subject. Now, uh, the word eschatology, which is more of a technical word for the end times or the last things, uh, is, is simply means you're studying scripture, you're studying by the Bible, on what it says about end times or coming world events and on into the future. So that's what word eschatology means. Now, uh, you know, we, in our day and time, uh, you know, when we look around the world, there's so much, so many things happening, you know, whether it's in the realm of uh, uh, global politics, things happening in various nations around the world, uh, then there is this whole things that grip people globally. You know, it's no, nowadays it's 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 not uh, local things. Uh, things that happen are you know just have a global impact. Whether you talk, whether you talk about fear, you talk about terrorism, you talk about racial intolerance. All these things uh, are global. They're no longer you know happening somewhere in some isolated part of the world. Um, then there are these uh, scientific and technological advances that are happening. Uh, it's just amazing what's what's happening uh, when we when we keep reading about you know, advances in science and technology. Uh, there are, of course, uh, environmental and climate changes uh, that are happening, and, uh, and 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 you know we're living in the middle of. Uh, a pandemic right now, and 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 if you're looking at how, you know, the world has almost come to a standstill for the last uh, two plus years, or almost two years and more, uh, and then when you and when we look at what the Bible says, you know, the kinds of plagues that happen during the tribulation are going to be much more severe than, you know, what we are seeing right now, uh, when. Uh, you know, uh, there have been numerous lives that have been lost in the pandemic. I'm not downplaying that. But when you look at the book of Revelation, the plagues that happen there, the judgments that happen there are even more severe. You know, it's hard to fathom uh, in our minds uh, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the gravity of what uh, Revelation talks about. Uh, then there are, of course, social challenges uh, and there are religious and spiritual challenges. And you'll find that all of these things uh, are in a heightened level or happen in a heightened level uh, during, you know, uh, uh, the, what we refer to as the tribulation period. The Bible calls it the tribulation, as we see, as we will see in the book of Revelation. So, what we want to answer is, you know, just put some reasons together as to why it's important for us to study about the end times. I mean, why should we have two courses, you know, one in your second year and another one in your third year uh, on the subject of the end times? Why should we, you know, study on this? Uh, here are some reasons I've uh, just put down together as from scripture of uh, one. Uh, the first reason we could say is um, that, you know, God has revealed this to us uh, about creation, redemption, life, death, eternity, and even things to come. And he wants us to understand it. In fact, he invites us to study it. Uh, the first three verses in the book of Revelation. Uh, would somebody want to read that out for us, please? Revelation chapter 1, uh, verses 1, 2, and 3. Somebody can read it out. All right, uh, Revelation 1, 1 to 3. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants, things which must shortly take place, 
and he sent and signified it by his angel, his servant John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, all the things that he saw. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. Mm. Amen. Thank you, Charles. So the book of Revelation starts off like this. Right? It's it's like it says, okay, and if you want to paraphrase this, uh, it's it's saying, okay, this is what Jesus has revealed uh, to his servant John uh, uh, with the help, you know, through his messenger angel, and these are things which must shortly take place. And John recorded everything that he heard from Jesus and which he saw, Jesus revealed to him. And then he says, verse 3, blessed are those who read this prophecy. That means blessed are those who read, who hear the words of all these things that I've written about things that are yet to come. And those who keep those things which are in it for the time is near. So he's saying, you know, it's, it's God is inviting us and look, I have revealed this to John of things that are to come and you're going to be blessed as you read it, understand it, keep it, live by it uh, because the time is near. Now, uh, just a side note, right? Uh, this was given back in AD 90. Uh, that means uh, oh, close to 2000 years ago. And uh, so people obviously asked the question, wow, you know, Jesus said, it's shortly to take place, the time is near, uh, but 2000 years have gone. Uh, what about it? And that we must keep in mind that uh, God speaks many thousands of years in advance, uh, as he did, you know, even in the Old Testament, we will look at some of these prophecies just to remind ourselves that God does speak sometimes thousands of years uh, in advance. And also that as far as God is concerned, the one who dwells in eternity, you know, this earth period, this period on the earth is very, very minute compared to eternity itself. Now for us, it seems like a long time, about 2000 years ago and these things are still happening. Uh, it seems like a very long time for us, but from God's perspective, it's near, it's shortly, right? So that's the perspective that we must uh, keep in mind as we look at Bible prophecy uh, and things. Secondly, you know, why is it important for us uh, to study end times, the signs of the times, uh, so that, you know, we will also be mindful of the times in which we live and we will be careful in the way we order our lives. So the Bible, you know, calls us to do that. Uh, Romans, the 13th chapter, uh, verses 11 to 14. Can somebody read that for us, please? Romans 13, 11 to 14. And do this knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Hmm. So, thank you. So, look at how Paul's, you know, he's speaking to believers. He says, knowing the time. So we are supposed to live knowing the time, you know. Now in our day-to-day -day lives, that's how we normally order our lives. We are watchful about what time of day or night it is. And, you know, then we order our lives according to that. Now he says our Christian life, our walk of faith is also in a similar way ordered with the time factor kept in mind. So knowing the time. And so we are, you know, where we are, so we, you know, don't engage in the things of darkness, but we walk 
in the light and uh, knowing that the day is at hand right? the day of course is referring to is the day of the lord the coming of the lord so so the day is at hand so uh you know we we walk in the light and and there are other scriptures also that that speak to this truth the third reason we want to study or we need to study uh, about end times is so that we could have hope you know uh we go through all kinds of things on earth uh, you know that life is not always easy uh things happen uh, but when we understand about what god has said concerning things yet to come and the eternity that's ahead of us it fills us with hope even though you know we may be going through challenges in this life right and and so there's that sense of hey there are greater things up in the future uh, which god has provided or planned for us and so i can journey through this it's okay i can journey through the challenges i may be going through here and now right so john tell, uh, writes this he says you know first john chapter 3 verse 2 and 3 can somebody read that for us please first john chapter 3 first john chapter 3 verse 2 to 3 beloved now we are children of god and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So John is telling us, you know, when he is revealed, when, 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 when the Lord is, comes, we are going to become like him. You know, we are going to be changed. We're going to put on these glorified spirit bodies uh, and we're going to see him as he is in other words look this is the great hope that we have and and because of that yeah uh, and so we have this hope and therefore john here says okay we purify ourselves just as he is pure uh, when you read peter's epistles uh, first and second peter especially in first peter uh, Peter emphasizes that over and over again in his episode. Uh, you know, if, if you want to just summarize first Peter, really he's talking about uh, uh, living in the midst of suffering with the hope of Christ's return. That's first Peter essentially. You know, he's, he keeps re reminding the the the, the 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 Jewish believers who've been dispersed through Asia. He's saying, look. Uh, we have this hope of re his return christ's return and therefore you know we can endure uh, whatever suffering we're going through so uh, we have this hope that we are going to see him we're going to be like him and we will see him as he is and so it gives us hope as we journey through life the fourth reason studying uh, just a couple of more reasons uh, studying the end times is so important uh, uh, is so is so that you know we uh, we are in agreement. We affirm that you know God is unfolding His glorious plan. So things on earth are not just left to happen, uh, you know, uh, uh, at random. Uh, it's not that God has forsaken people or man you know people, the human race uh, but god is unfolding his glorious plan uh, in the midst of all that we are seeing happen around us which sometimes may be very chaotic sometimes some, we can't even understand why all these things are happening yet over and above all of that god we affirm that god is unfolding his glorious plan. He's going to get everything, redeem everything back to himself, and uh, and and that he's working to, or he's moving towards this. Paul summarizes this in First Corinthians 15, uh, 24 through 26. Uh, can somebody read that for us, please? Uh, 
I'll admit it. All right, go ahead, Maggie. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. Mm. Amen. So Paul is saying, hey, the time is coming when he is going to bring everything in subjection to himself, including death. He's going to bring everything. And then he's going to wrap this up completely. And he's going to put everything underneath his feet. And uh, he will rule. He's going to ex exercise his dominion until everything comes under his feet. And so we will see these things you know, as foretold for us in scripture. You know, uh, what, what is God's plan? The, the timeline or by the uh, uh, prophetic timeline that has been uh, laid out for us. But that's what God is working towards. Even death is going to be put under his feet and he's going to set up new heavens and a new earth where death will no longer be there. Uh, last two reasons, last two points on why, you know, we need to study about the end times. Number five is so that, you know, we could go about fulfilling our assignment here on earth, uh, which is to proclaim the gospel to the ends of the earth, uh, to, you know, bring his message uh, to people all over. Uh, and that we understand this is our assignment. Uh, we don't know, you know, how much time we have. All we can say is, you know, we're getting really close, especially when we look at the signs of the times, we're getting really close. Is it going to happen in our lifetime? Maybe, uh, but we are pretty close. So let us do what we can do in our lifetime to get the gospel to as many people as we can and to live lives that are meaningful. So Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 to 11. Could somebody read that for us? Sir, 2 Corinthians 5, 10 to 11. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body, according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known in our conscience. In your conscience. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Yeah. So... Uh, we live with the awareness of this fact that, you know, one day as believers, we are going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. So, and I have, you know, as we draw out this prophetic timeline, um, this judgment seat of Christ, which is uh, often referred to as the Bema judgment, uh, simply because that's the Greek word Paul uses there for judgment, the Bema judgment, the judgment seat of Christ, is different from the great white throne judgment of Revelation uh, 20. Uh, or, you know, so these are two different judgments. This is the believer's judgment, the judgment seat of Christ. And we as believers stand before our Lord, Jesus Christ, uh, to give an account of what we did with our lives here on earth. Uh, and, 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 and then he rewards us according to uh, how we served him. So the the, under, the motivation here is, look, I understand Bible prophecy. I understand the times in which we live. And I just I must be faithful in doing what God has called us to do. The last reason uh, we study Bible prophecy is because this prophecy, Bible prophecy, has to be preached to people. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the prophetic scriptures has to be made known to people so that they uh, realize, so they understand, hey, the Bible has foretold many of these things. And so the prophetic scriptures should be proclaimed. And it is part of the proclamation of the gospel or the preaching of Jesus Christ. Uh, we find this in uh, Romans, the 16th chapter, verses 25 to 27. Could somebody read that for us, please? Sixteen twenty-five to 27. Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel 
and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began, but now made manifest and by the prophetic scriptures made known to all nations according to the commandment of the everlasting God for obedience to the faith. To God alone wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. So Paul is talking about the gospel, about the preaching of Jesus Christ, and he's talking about the revelation of the mystery, the uh, all the secrets that God has unveiled to the church. You know, it was kept secret, but now it's been revealed to the church, and in that he includes the prophetic scriptures, right? So he says, look, all of this, the gospel, the preaching of Jesus Christ, everything God has revealed to us, the prophetic scriptures must be made known to all the nations. For what? For obedience to the faith, to bring people to the faith, right? So uh, uh, part of what we need to proclaim to the nations is, the prophetic scriptures, things that the Bible has concerning the end times and so on. And, uh, you know, many of you uh, or many of us would have experienced that, uh, you know, that in the preaching uh, of end time prophecy, uh, you know, people do uh, uh, get woken up, you know, they're like, whoa, this is what the Bible says. Now, I remember a long time ago in college, uh, when I was an engineer in college. So this is way back in, uh, I think it was 1989. Uh, I was, when I was studying in engineering college, um, in those days, there was a, 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 a some secular band that had come out with a song called The Final Countdown. Right? So the song title was The Final Countdown. And that song was really, catching on among, you know, in those days, among all the young people. Uh, so I, <laughs> I uh, purposely took that title, The Final Countdown. And, uh, you know, we did uh, like a seminar. We had entered uh, 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 the banquet hall in a hotel. This, is, this was in Manipal. Uh, so Brother Solins might uh, I may know what I'm talking about. Uh, this was Hotel Valley yeah, View. Yes, for sure, yes. I do. So, yeah, so Hotel Valley View in uh, Manipal. Uh, we rented the banquet hall there. And I, I did a seminar. And the title of the seminar was The Final Countdown. You know? And so we, uh, throughout the campuses, you know, there was the engineering college, the medical college and all that. Uh, we put this banner and posters, The Final Countdown. And, uh, you know, and so all the young people were very inquisitive, you know, what is this thing? Uh, because they were listening to the song, which was so popular in those days. Uh, and when they came, uh, I just, you know, I tried to, in, 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 a, in a one sermon, uh, just present uh, in a very, you know, kind of a very quick way, an overview of what the Bible is telling us about the things that are going to happen. And are you ready? You know, so, uh, and it was really you know, impactful people gave their lives to Christ, you know, and, and, and uh, chose to follow Christ. Uh, just listening to end time Bible prophecy uh, and saying that, oh, the Bible has foretold all these things, you know, and we are pretty close to the end of times. So the preaching of Bible prophecy uh, to the nations, making it aware to the people, uh, making people aware of it, uh, does, you know, pull some people in uh, to become obedient to the faith. So, you know, so we've just seen here six reasons, you know, on why the study of Bible prophecy is important. Just quickly review, uh, we said God wants us to do it. He invites us to understand these things. Uh, two, it's going to help us live right uh, in, in relation to the times in which we live. It, third, it fills us with hope. Fourth, we uh, recognize that God is unfolding his plan. Uh, fifth, uh, we uh, are motivated to uh, you know, live responsibly and go about our assignment. And number six, the preaching of prophecy uh, can invite people to the faith. So these are some reasons I'm sure you, know, you could add to this. Now, 
so having given that little bit of introduction, uh, how uh, are we going to study Bible prophecy? Okay, let me pause and see if there are any questions before I jump into this. Um, any questions, everybody? Okay. Any questions so far? Everybody's? Okay. All right. Let's continue. All right. So uh, how are we going to study the end times? You know, uh, we have to admit that um, there are lots of different perspectives on, and, and we will make mention of that uh, in this section, uh, on, on, on uh, interpreting or understanding uh, Bible prophecy, right? So I'm just going to present to you how we are going to study. What are some of the guidelines we're going to keep uh, as we study and Bible prophecy? And uh, what is the uh, perspective with which we are going to approach it, right? Uh, so I'll just share that now. So when we study end time Bible prophecy, uh, the first rule that we are going to follow is that we are going to take things in the literal sense first. And if the literal cannot be possible or cannot happen or cannot be understood, then we say, okay, it is figurative, all right? So when you read about certain things, when, you, when it talks about the temple, it's okay, it is the temple, you know, uh, Revelation 11 talks about the temple. So what temple, you know, we don't have to, Take that, and if we will, let's say, we, we will take it in a literal sense that this is a temple uh, that will be in place in Jerusalem when it says that the temple is desecrated, right? So we don't have to, uh, 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 what to say, uh, make that a figurative thing. No, it's a literal temple, right? So, um, uh, so, so like that, that, that many things we will take literally. That's our first approach, and then. When there are elements that don't make sense literally, then it's okay, it's figurative. And if it is figurative, we want, how do we interpret those uh, images, those figures? Many times, as you will see, uh, the interpretation is given right there in the context, in the chapter itself, or in either the preceding or the following section, uh, the figures, the images are interpreted many times, not always, but many times, uh, especially in the book of Daniel. You know, when you read Daniel, it seems very confusing, but actually it's all interpreted there for us. You know, when, when Daniel sees this image of gold, uh, this image with different metals of gold and brass and uh, 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 bronze and iron and the feet of clay and uh, you know uh, the, the interpretation of that whole image is right there for us uh, in Daniel 2 and then chapter 4 and so on uh, or when he, uh, you know, and so Daniel there are many images but these things are interpreted there and so we go with the interpretation of those images that are given to us in scripture so we don't bring in our image or our interpretation of those images, but we either go with the interpretation given in the context or within scripture for those images, right? So that's going to be our approach. Take the literal. If the literal doesn't make sense, okay, yeah, we say it's figurative, but in interpreting the figurative, stay within what is stated in scripture. Secondly, when we are looking at uh, end time Bible prophecy, uh, we don't want to engage in speculation or sensationalism. Now, especially when it comes to Bible prophecy, um, there are certain people who make things so sensational. You know, I remember back in 1980, Seven, eighty-six, eighty-seven. When I was, you know, really studying Bible prophecy, and I was just looking into this, I remember those days. Uh, uh, somebody had written a book. The title of the book was "Jesus is Coming Back" by 1988, you know, and 101 reasons, you know. Now, 
the title of the book got my attention. I, I looked through it, I, I studied it. Uh, 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 but, you know, uh, the title was very sensational. You know, when you say Jesus coming back by 1988, uh, everybody wants to you know, get that book. Wow, you know, on what basis does he say it? But actually, uh, the signs were in you know, the regular signs of the times, uh, the 101 uh, signs you would mention. But any, uh, so people sometimes make it very sensational uh, in order to get, maybe they're doing it to get people's attention or whatever. But uh, when we, uh, you know, our approach is, hey, let's just study it. Let's not make it um, uh, sensational. You know, just understand that these are the things uh, and some of the things uh, foretold in scripture are amazing. Uh, are, uh, it just makes us stand in awe of the details that are there. Um, uh, but uh, let's not unnecessarily, you know, hype it up or make it sensational. And then we don't want to be speculative. You know, the Bible, Jesus did say of the day and the hour, no one knows. So all we can say is, look, we are pretty close. All these things are being fulfilled before our eyes. We are living in a time when these kinds of prophecies can be fulfilled. Um, because of what we have, the advancements that have been made in uh, science and technology, we can understand it. And that it, it, the times in which we live, these things can happen, you know. And uh, 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 so, for example, when it says the plague came in 20, you know, a fifth of the world or 20% of the world's population is gone, you know, we can understand that now because, hey, things spread so fast and, you know, just maybe even months within a, you know, a short time, maybe weeks, uh, things can, you know, impact globally. So then we can understand it. Yeah. You know, uh, if 20% of the world's vegetation is burnt, I mean, we read about the fires and, you know, whether it's in, 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 in uh, Australia or uh, parts of North, North America or in South America, those huge forest fires uh, that, uh, you know, just burn down acres and acres. Uh, but when you read in the book of Revelation that, you know, a fifth of the world's vegetation is gone, uh, you can understand, yeah, it's, it, it can happen, but in a much grander scale than what we are, bigger scale than what we are seeing now. It's, but at the same time, we can't, we shouldn't speculate and say, okay, this is the year, this is the date. Uh, you know, when things are going to happen. And uh, people have done this over and over again uh, in times past and always ended up as an embarrassing situation. So we don't engage in speculation. Now, the third thing when we are studying in time Bible prophecy is uh, we want to be open to differing positions in interpreting Bible prophecy. Now, as I share this with you, as, I, as we go through this course, you will find that I am pretty firm in what I believe uh, in the sequence of events, right? So, I, I, and I will give you reasons. When I say uh, the rapture will take place uh, before the tribulation, you know, and uh, it, it's coming up in a, another chapter. I'll give you solid reasons as to why we believe that will happen. Uh, so, you know, you, it, it may almost seem like I'm forcing that on you, uh, uh, not necessary. I'm fine if you want to take a different view. That's perfectly fine, okay? Uh, but I am only, uh, 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 I, I'm approaching it, or I'm going to share this whole sequence of events, of Bible prophecy and so on, uh, from uh, uh, the, the way I understand it. But I am open. And I understand that there are other positions uh, on on some of these things. So I, I won't get upset if if you choose to take a different position. That's perfectly fine. If you're convinced uh, from Scripture uh, that uh, a, a, a different position is is what you should take, perfectly fine. But uh, you know, uh, so I, I'll just share some of these things with you. So some of the common positions, uh, and this is not all, uh, there are other positions as well, but some of the common ones that you and I need to be aware are uh, in terms of uh, interpreting Bible 
prophecy are these four. One is dispensational premillennialism. Okay, so that's the position from which I will be speaking or I will be presenting this whole uh, course. That's our position. Um, and I've explained, right? Uh, dispensational premillennialism. Then there is uh, a, a, another position that some uh, Bible students or Bible teachers may hold, uh, which is a historical premillennialism. And that's that's what traditional church fathers held for a period of time. That's why it's called historical, and I will explain that. Uh, there is what is referred to as post-millennialism. There's also a millennialism, uh, uh, and so on. Now, in the pre-millennial position, uh, there are those who hold you know, a pre-tribulation position, a mid-tribulation position, and a post-tribulation position, meaning when the rapture will take place, when will the church be taken out, you know, and uh, so even there, there are variations. And uh, the position that I would be coming to sharing with you from is that of the pre-tribulation position, right? So if you, uh, just to give you a little heads up, not to scare you, but I will explain this to you, so our position in this course, or my position in presenting this whole study or this whole course to you is from a dispensational premillennialism, or sometimes people call it a conservative premillennialism. You know, they use different language. But uh, dispensational premillennialism, premillennialism with a pre-tribulation rapture of the church. So let's explain these terms, these different positions. Um, okay, maybe we have only three more minutes for break. Okay, let me pause here and uh, we will explain all these terms right you know as, uh, right after the break and uh, uh, and 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 like I said you know, we will give you strong biblical reasons uh, uh, as we present the sequence of events and why we believe this is it but we are open in the sense that if you want to have a differing view on it uh, and you're convinced uh, uh, to have that from scripture, perfectly fine. You know, we're not uh, going to be against that. Uh, let me pause here and see if there are any questions, any, okay. All right, so we have a question from Kennedy. Uh, the question from Kennedy is, what is the name of the angel that gave this revelation to Apostle John in the book of Revelation? So Kennedy, uh, we don't have that uh, mentioned for us in the book of uh, Revelation, so we don't know. We don't know the answer to that. Another question, uh, Divya, um, can we say that dreams need to be interpreted and be taken in a figurative sense always? So, in interpreting dreams, uh, um, um, they don't. They, sh they shouldn't be uh, taken in a figurative sense always. So I even in interpreting dreams, we take the same approach. That means, first, uh, you know, whatever you've seen in the dream, you say, okay, let me understand it literally. If the literal doesn't make sense, then the the, the people and the images that I see in the that I've seen in the dream should then be figurative. But dreams are almost always interpreted in the context of the recipient uh, because it's God speaking to you. So uh, uh, if it's a message for you, then you know you would be the best person to understand you know what those images mean because it's in your world context that God is speaking. Right? But uh, we follow the same approach. First, literal. If the literal doesn't make sense, then figurative. Example, in a dream, if you see a person whom you know, then that's literal. But if you see that person doing something that's no, 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 uh, it doesn't make sense, then that person, then you take that person not literally, but the person as representing something that the person stands for or means to you, right? So that means that person now takes on a figurative meaning. Right? 
But your first approach is that person literal. But if what you're seeing the person do doesn't make sense, then that person is, uh, can be interpreted in a figurative sense. Okay. Um, next question. Uh, I will come to you, Samuel. I'll just uh, finish this one from Charles. About speculation and sensationalism, how do you relate it to point one of literal and figurative? You know, um, so for example, there is one, one uh, whole perspective of end time Bible prophecy that looks at all of prophecy as something that was fulfilled starting from the birth of the church. That means from the first century on. And in that whole view of Bible prophecy, a common interpretation that you will see is they point to the Roman Catholic Church as, uh, you know, this uh, Revelation 17, this mystery Babylon, uh, and uh, they point to the Roman Catholic Church and so on. So that's a very common interpretation of those who hold that perspective. Now, that is uh, speculation and sensationalism because now you are, you know, and then, then, then you know, and you will see that they pick on the names of the popes and the titles of the popes and they uh, interpret the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the number of the pope and, and, and all of that stuff, which is, which is none of that is even supported by scripture. Right. So that's all what we were put in the category of speculation. You know, now it is very, you know, for those who like it, it sounds interesting to read, but uh, it's just mere speculation. It's not supported by scripture. And it, you know, it makes it a lot of, makes it very sensational uh, when you start uh, using the names of the popes and interpreting their names and coming out uh, with the equivalent numbers and so on and so forth. That's just one example. But um, people can make, uh, you know, uh, these images very, very uh, sensational. One example, I think I may have mentioned it, uh, is from Revelation 12. And this happened a few years ago. Uh, uh, so it must have happened in 2019, 2019. So yeah, if I if I'm not mistaken, uh, actually maybe we're actually in our break time. Uh, okay, let me just say this very quickly. Uh, in 2019, uh, NASA had uh, come out with information saying, you know, the there there is a certain alignment of certain stars, uh, and 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 it looks like you know a woman giving birth to uh, a, a baby. Uh, and then people got so excited. I mean, people means certain part of the Christian world. Uh, they took Revelation 12. It talks about this woman, uh, this, uh, uh, the, the stars, uh, and the woman giving birth to a man child. And they said, oh, this is the year 2019. And I think it was the month was sometime in September, I guess. Uh, I forget the details now. Jesus is coming back. You know, and it kind of just, uh, I don't know whether you received emails on it and so on, but it became so sensational. You know, Jesus coming back because NASA has, predict, has, you know, given us all this information. The stars are coming into this kind of an alignment. Revelation 12 talks about that. And Jesus is coming back. We get, everybody must get ready. You know, and then September came and went. And here we are in 2022. Uh, time is gone. So uh, people can get sick, sensational when they're using all these figures uh, and, and so on, okay? Just a few examples. Okay, let's pause here. And uh, Samuel, shall we take up your question right after the break? Uh, sure, Pastor. Okay, thank you. So let's go for a 
quick 10 minute break um, and we'll be back at 11.05 Indian time. And then we will uh, pick up with Samuel's question and go forward. Okay, thanks.